The purpose of this learning guide is to help you understand the required process. It's quite likely that you've been asked to reflect in some of your studies in the past. It's not that likely that you've been asked to use this particular process. And the particular process that I require of you is directly linked to the assessment process. So it's very important that you understand the process and that you follow the process, okay? Remember, I'm not making any subjective judgments about what you say. I'm only making judgments about the extent to which you followed the process in terms of both your clarity, that is how concise you are, and also the depth that you've been able to achieve across the nature of your reflections. So remember, first and foremost, this reflection is all about you, your experiences, and the sense that you make of those experiences. So there's no need to go looking for a correct answer anywhere else. I'm not looking for a correct answer. I'm only looking for you to engage in a process. So please trust the process and everything else will take care of itself. Now you'll see on the screen, we've got this little set of stairs that uh, goes from the top on the left and works its way down. I'm using this set of stairs as a metaphor to help you imagine that we have an entry point and let's put up a little question at the top here and let's uh, this could be a question you get but it, it might just be very similar to other questions you may get to what extent do you recognize an entrepreneurial self in your everyday behaviors now we call this the primary question this is what I want you to address it's what I want you to be thinking about but I'm now going to give you seven supporting questions which are going to help you structure the nature of your reflections and they will by design enable you to go deeper into this particular question i am interested in your thinking but i'm just as interested in your feelings and your challenge is to be able to sort of use both not just the surface level of thinking that you have in relation to a topic or a question but also to think about what's in your heart, where your values are, what you believe, what excites you, what angers you. And the subsequent challenge to all of this is being able to write it in a very concise manner. Now, while there is a word limit given for your reflections, it's very important that you understand that I don't hold that word limit really tightly. So if you need to use more words, to actually express yourself in the first instance, then that's fine. It may mean that you don't get full marks because you've used way too many words, but that's part of the process of you working towards becoming more concise. I would rather that you get the reflection out there and maybe you lose a little bit of a mark for being too long. It's certainly not going to be lots of marks, but a little bit, than you actually being able to not cover the ground. Okay. So we've got this primary question. Well, we're going to leave it on top of the screen. And this is the type of question you would be asked. But to address that question, I want you to work your way through seven supporting questions. Now, the first one is asking you what it actually is you've learned that's new. So in this example, we've, we're talking about your entrepreneurial self in your everyday life. So I'm wondering, having been through the experience that precedes this question being asked, what is it that you sense? What is it that you recognize that's new in your thinking, in your behavior, in your awareness? What's new? And so all I'm really looking for you to do here is to make a connection between the recent experiences you've had in the unit and your consideration of something that you now recognize to be new. This could be a positive or a negative thing. It could be that you decide that you actually really hate the way this unit runs. That would be something new. It could be that you've made a really big, had a big epiphany about who you are as an individual. That would be fine too. The key is, it doesn't matter whether you're coming up with something negative or positive. The key is that you explain how, how, how you've come to this, uh, to this uh, position. And we use the word why, or the letter Y, to help you do that. 
So you may say, well, what I've realized that's new is that as a result of the experience in this unit, I think entrepreneurship sucks. You could say that. That's a new piece of knowledge that you've come to. Now, what I would expect to see then is the word why or the letter Y straight after that, which tells me that you're now asking yourself why. You might say, why? Because I've always been put up to believe that X, Y, and Z. Why does that matter? And I feel comfortable with you know, A, B, and C. So you're using the word or the letter Y to show me the depth in your thinking, that you're not just moving along at one level, that within each one of these supporting questions, you're actually going down and deeper into each one of these questions. So that's where we would start with the first step, which is what have you learned that's new relative to this question you're being asked, the red question at the top of the page. Then the next question on the next step, number two, would be how does this relate to your values? So clearly I'm expecting you to tell me what your values are. What do you believe in? What do you like? What makes you happy? What makes you sad, right? And how does this relate to this new learning that you've got? Again, use the why to go deeper into your answer. It's going to be three or four sentences or so, you know, that typically the nature of a, a pretty good answer. Then we go on to question three, and now we're thinking about the extent to which this new knowledge and your understanding of its relationship to your values, to what extent have these values or beliefs of yours been challenged or confirmed by the nature of this thinking? Again, use the why to go deeper in each question. Then we move on to question four. Where is your life experience in the process? And typically, I'll have students who say to me, look, I've just been a student all my life. I don't have any life experience. Well, that's never going to be true. You've got your family life, you've got your social life, you've got your sporting life, you've got your work life, you've got your student life, you've got a whole range of different life experiences where you've behaved and acted in certain ways. And how does this new knowledge that you've become aware of, how does it relate to that? Would you like to go back and have the opportunity to relive moments of your past life? Might it change the way that you behave in your current life, right? And again, use the why to go deeper into explaining your answer. In the fifth question, I'm really interested for you to step out from what's just inside your own thinking and become and demonstrate your awareness of other people's thinking. So how does your thinking compare, contrast to other people's thinking? So this could be, you know, statements that people are making in video clips on YouTube. It could be other classmates, it could be people in your family, it could be your work friends. You may have had conversations about this, I would encourage that, where you're trying to get a sense of how other people feel or think differently than you do or the same. And where's your appreciation of what that may mean? And question six is asking you to think about the new information sources that you've engaged with. I don't want this to be something that you've just reflected on purely based on in your mind. Have you got onto Google? Have you read a book? Have you read an article? Have you talked to people? What are the new information sources that you've engaged with to develop this appreciation of new knowledge and how it relates to your values and how it connects to your life experiences and your acceptance or disacceptance of other people's thinking? So having done these six questions and used the why, it may look funny, but just, you know, it's... Here's your full stop at the end of the question. Just put your why there, the word or the letter. It just shows me that you're asking yourself that question. Now I want you to step back from those six questions, right back, and look at what you've said. And I want you to ask yourself, what does that tell you about yourself as a learner, the way you've approached this task? You're finding something positive about yourself as a learner. Maybe there's something that can be improved upon, and that's what I'd like you to tell me. What does it tell you and what might it mean for you going forward as a learner? What improvements can be made? Okay. So that's the, that's the essence of the process that I'm wanting you to engage in. My general advice, given that I'm wanting you to be concise in what you're doing, carry around, whether it's on your phone or a piece of paper or whatever it may be, think this through for a few days. It's not something you sit down and do in 10 minutes. That will clearly show me that you don't have... Uh, the depth, I suspect, uh, that you could have achieved if you'd 
let this thing roll around with you for a few days. What I'm wanting you to be able to do is to take all of that thinking and put it into a nice concise format. It's going to be seven separate um, seven separate paragraphs. So for each one of those questions, just write, you know, first paragraph, what have I learned that's new? Second paragraph, how does it relate to my values? You can put the questions themselves in there. That would be fine way of starting your paragraphs. But a clear seven paragraphs. So I can very easily see the focus of your writing, okay? Um, then just save the file and then on Blackboard you'll see the link to turn it in for that particular personal learning statement. Click on the link, upload your file into turn it in and then it'll be sitting there waiting for me to assess. All right, you'll get feedback from me and then we can move forward from there. Good luck. If you have any questions and you're unsure of something, then by all means, just contact me.